Well, the weather has finally cooperated and it's dried up just long enough for us to be able to tape a show for you. We have gotten weeks of rain, it seems like. And with this dry temperature and the sun coming out, our onions are really to the point that we need to be harvesting them. We've got two different uh, types of plants as far as the way that we planted them. The ones on this half were our transplants, and this half of the varieties are the sets that we put in. We've actually got four varieties, and you can tell by looking overall that we've got one variety that is actually really to the point of harvesting, and that is our Texas sweet onion, which is right here. Really, there are some things that you need to keep in mind when harvesting onions. There's a lot of unanswered questions and some myths and different practices that people use. And one seems to be, when is the first time or the appropriate time to start harvesting them? Well, once they start drying up like this variety is here, that's a good clue as to the really ready to harvest. But if you'll notice, some of the ones have fallen over the tops here, and some people make that a practice of bending them over. And really, bending the onion tops over doesn't help size up the bulbs anymore. That's just a sign that they're starting to dry up. But for us to be able to harvest all of these at the same time, we would want to go in and bend that top over. And that's one thing that we've done with some of this variety that's a little bit greener. And that just helps make it a little easier for us to harvest them at the same time. Now there's really four things you need to remember in harvesting onions. First of all, you need to pull them. And you can do that a couple of days ahead of time even. And just loosen them up a little bit, disturb them, and just let them sit there. Uh, but really the best thing to do is when you pull them, go ahead and get them out of the ground. And some people will just lay them on the side like this and let them dry. And they do need a period of drying. But a big problem is that people will do this and leave them several hours in the garden and they'll get sunburned. So the best thing is just to pull them, put them on newspaper, and then maybe sit them under a shade tree or something until they dry. And that may be anywhere from two to three days. Then uh, they need to go through a curing process. And that may take anywhere from two to three weeks. And basically what you're doing to let them cure is to let them uh, kind of heal over a little bit where they get a stronger skin, but you want them to dry right along this neck part when they're curing because if you cut into that or they're not cured properly, they'll rot, usually at the neck base, and that's when we shorten the life of our storage. So after you pull them, you want to let them dry for a couple of three days, then cure them for two to three weeks, and again, that needs to just be where there's good air circulation. And then the other thing is, is storing them, and this is a kind of a fun thing. You know, we can almost write a book on 100 uses of pantyhose in the garden. But here's another use. You just take your uh, cured onion, and to store them, you just push them down in the leg, tie a knot like we've done here, push another onion in and tie a knot. And then when you want to harvest them, you can harvest them one at a time for eating and just go in and cut that pantyhose off. And of course, we're using uh, pruners here, so they're not going to cut on us. But you can cut them off one at a time with that knot there, and that's a good way to, to hang them up, or just hang them up in period. Now let's cut into one and see what it look, looks like as well. And we're going to cut it at an angle here so you can see that. They really are looking nice, and the foliage is starting to speckle on some of them. People ask that question quite a bit too, what's causing that? That's from an insect caused thrips, and uh, they have sucking mouth parts, and mainly it just distorts the foliage, and this time of year it really isn't a problem because they're starting to dry and harvest as well. So we'll uh, harvest these up here and dry them and cure them, and we'll see how they taste in the kitchen tonight as well. This is one of my most favorite times of year when it comes to the growing season, and that's because it's almost like a buffet out here, and if you look at my hands, it's almost a giveaway. I just can't stay out of these small fruits. I'm sorry I had to take a break to do that, but they're just so tempting, and of course we've got so many varieties out here too. Sitting next to the black raspberry bushes, and they're a perennial, and we've harvested quite a few here, and they actually come off in a cluster form, kind of like the strawberries, where one will ripen at a time. And the distinguishing characteristics between the black raspberry and a blackberry is 
that when you pull the raspberries off, it leaves a hollow center and the calyx remains on the plant where it all comes off on the blackberry. And there is quite a difference in that. Now we've also got some red raspberries, but they really do the poorest of all of the fruits that we have here. They're coming along a little late and we're not sure if we'll even get any production out of them. We've got several varieties of the blackberries and they range in a lot of large sizes. Again, they're very scrumptious. And we've also just starting to harvest our blueberries. And like a lot of the fruits, the larger ones are the ones that come off the very first. Now our other small fruit is our grapes. And we've been spraying, trying to control this fungus disease called uh, black rot. And we've tried to control it this year, but with the rain, it's pretty much been to no avail. So we're getting some disease on it, but we're gonna still try to salvage some of those as best we can. Now, some of our tree fruits, we've got a great crop of sour cherries this year. We're harvesting those, and of course, the darker red, the better ripeness you get with them. And they've got seeds in them, so they're a lot of work, but they're still very tasty in a cherry pie. And for the first time, we've got some pineapple quince fruit, which is very similar to a pear. And they're very fuzzy this time of year, and we're really pleased with that. We've got a good crop load, even considering the size of the tree, and we hope that it will come along and we'll get some production there and see how those are gonna size up in the garden as well. We also are doing quite well with some of our other trees as far as growth, but not much production, and that's why it's so important that you keep on them with insects and disease observations and fertilizing and that kind of thing, and really fruits are a high maintenance crop here in Oklahoma. Well, our peaches are starting to color up, and we've got a great crop this year, but how do you know when a peach is ripe? Well, the best way to check, a lot of us go by the red or pinkish color, but that's really not the best clue. It's usually best to look at the end and see the green color, which will change from a darker green to a lighter green and then to a pale color, depending upon the variety, of course. And I'd like to show some of the different pest problems we've had on our peach this year. Some of the ones that are just starting to turn ripe, we've got birds that come in and land on the branches and start pecking out the fruit, and that, of course, causes it to ripen quicker and that attracts different butterflies and moths and flies. So those are a good idea to pull those away and get rid of them as quick as you can. Another common problem that we see, a lot of our viewers describe it as oozing on the fruit and that's just from an insect called the plum curculio and it has a beak that pokes a hole in there and it causes a little bit of the juice to Eat, uh, to leak out and then that will get usually a different type of mold or something on the sap that you see there. And these can be controlled with different pesticides earlier in the season. Now one of the worst pests in the garden is the human species and this particular one is uh, our extension assistant Alan Jobs who uh, I guess we can take his word for it this one is definitely right but we try to keep Alan under control as well. But another common problem in the garden is called brown uh, rot. And really what happens, it's a fungus disease that gets on the fruit and it starts to deteriorate and it gets a lot of mold on it, fungal spores, and then it will just become mummified and that's how it's described on the fruit and it will eventually dry up and look like a seed hanging off of the tree. Now those will need to be pulled off or sweeped up if they fall on the ground and we need to get rid of them because that's a great source to reinfect the fruit. The last one I want to show you is from an insect called stink bugs, and we're familiar with those, but when the fruit is immature, the bug will come in and again sting it, and it just causes it to become distorted. And there's a lot of other plant bugs as well that will cause this same symptom. And again, the fruit is still very tasty, but sometimes when they're damaged like this, they'll ripen a little bit quicker, so we really need to keep an eye on them. Now let me show you a variety next to this one that is a late maturing variety and this one is called topaz and it really won't ripen until another probably three weeks, even four weeks. So it's a little bit later variety where our other variety is really earlier. So you can see it still has a green color to it, but you'll see these specks on it which is another disease called peach scab. And this one can deteriorate the fruit, but again at maturity if it's just the outside area, just peel it off and eat it anyway, but a lot of times for marketing fruit, it will have an impact. 
So as you can see, growing tree fruits is a high maintenance form of gardening. It takes a lot of input to get those picture perfect fruit. But a lot of times, as you can tell by some of the samples I've shown you, they don't have to be picture perfect to taste good. 